Hi everybody. Are there more? Oh, there we've got. Looks like we got 18 participants on the phone already. So this is Pete with Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice California, um, and uh, we're uh, just getting ready as folks join. So thank you all for joining us. Um, we're gonna uh, have folks settle in a little bit, and then we'll get started with our agenda. Um, uh, if you are on, can you, oh, it looks like we're up to 35 attendees. This is great. Um, uh, while we're waiting for other folks to join, uh, it'd be great if everybody could just start to put in the chat uh, where you're calling in from. Uh, um, we know this is uh, where, where today's call is about bringing folks from uh, all over the West Coast in California to uh, uh, outline the exciting work that we're going to do in San Francisco. And so, if you're able to see the chat on your Zoom link, um, uh, go ahead and uh, toss it in the chat. I'd love to hear where you're calling in from and um, uh, so we can see the full scope of where folks are coming from. I'm seeing folks from Petaluma and from San Jose and from Richmond, San Francisco, Santa Monica, Santa Cruz. So a good uh, Fair Oaks. Um, and good diversity of folks coming from all across California. Um, so we'll give folks another minute or two to sign in. Uh, I have somebody from Oakhurst. Um, and then we'll uh, get started with our agenda in just a second. Uh, someone calling in from Santa Barbara. Um, so again, uh, my name is Pete Wywoody and uh, I'm with uh, Rise for Cl uh, Climate Jobs and Justice, uh, California. And uh, we'll get into the context in a little bit, but uh, today's call is about the action in San Francisco happening on September 8th. And uh, we're really thrilled that you all are joining. Um, uh, and so let's get started. I'll outline a little bit of what we're gonna do today. Uh, thank you all for joining us. We've got an hour long uh, call with really exciting speakers uh, today and uh, hoping to uh, uh, open up some uh, dialogue about what's going to happen on September 8th. Here are some of the plans of what will hopefully be, what will definitely be the largest climate mobilization in California and West Coast history coming on September 8th. And hear from the leaders who are making this happen. And then answer some of your questions and uh, get into how we can all build this out together over the next several months. Um, I do want to start, uh, um, I will, we'll do some intros in a second, but I do want to start with just acknowledging that uh, it's been a tough day in the world and in this country uh, today and in the last uh, week or so, just acknowledging that uh, families being separated from, uh, children being separated from their families by the inhumane uh, um, immigration system in this country, uh, the Supreme Court decisions yesterday and today uh, punishing Muslim people and, uh, and women and today uh, challenging workers rights to stand up for their rights and so I want to acknowledge that we're, there's a lot we're up against and also want to say that that's one of the reasons that we're doing this right now is to step into uh, what we're standing for and uh, and really building something together that has space for all of those communities and a different future ahead of us so um, thank you all for joining so today we're going to have uh, a great group of uh, speakers including uh, Antonio Diaz from Poder uh, which is a community organization in San Francisco, uh, um, Karina Gould from Indian People Organizing for Change, uh, Elena uh, Aurora from Culture Strike, um, which is a phenomenal arts organization, uh, Matt and Vanessa from 350.org, and again, myself, I'm Pete from uh, Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice in California. And uh, again, we're focused on uh, September 8th, and um, we've got almost, uh, we've got 55 people on the call now, and uh, we've heard from folks who are calling in from Agora Hills, from Santa Rosa, from Santa Barbara, from Oakhurst, folks from all over the, the state. So thank you all for joining us. And uh, here's how we're going to uh, do it. We'll heal a little bit of the, the political uh, fra framing and strategy, sort of why are we doing this? What, what makes September 8th important and special? And then we'll hear the plan, uh, what's gonna actually happen in San Francisco on September 8th and why it makes sense for you and uh, your team and your family and your friends to join us there. And then we'll dive into um, uh, the really special piece of what the day is gonna look like, uh, um, uh, the, the largest street mural of all time. 
and we'll a little teaser there. And, uh, and then we'll get into how it's actually going to happen. What are the nuts and bolts? What do you need to know? And uh, digging in uh, um, uh, with your questions at the end. So um, we'll get started and I'll hand it over to uh, Antonio Diaz um, to give us a little bit of the why September 8th. Antonio? Hi everyone, this is Antonio with Poder, people organizing to demand environmental and economic rights here in San Francisco um, at the, our office in the Mission District. So as folks know uh, in, uh, that the governor, Governor Brown, has called for this Global Climate Action Summit to take place here in the city, in San Francisco, from September 12th to the 14th of this year. And uh, well, as we know, the summit is an opportunity for governments at the local, state, and international level uh, to come together for, uh, for corporations to make their pronouncements about um, what they're doing for, uh, for climate change. Uh, all well and good, but as we know, uh, just because uh, they say they're doing something around climate action doesn't mean that they're addressing the fundamental issues of equity, the fundamental issues of racial and economic justice that are crucial to achieve climate justice. So, uh, so as, as folks are coming together from across the globe, we, we as a movement want to come together to say that we need real climate leadership, especially now at this, uh, at this time. Uh, it's a good opportunity given that people, as I mentioned, from around the country and around the globe will be, be, here, will be here. So it's important for us to raise our voices and, um, and show what real solutions to the climate crisis look like based obviously on the work that we're all doing on the ground and together across the state uh, and across the country and even globally. So we're gonna have a march here in San Francisco on the 8th. Uh, as folks know, the, uh, the march that's happening here in San Francisco is part of a global day of action. So there's actually gonna be hundreds of events happening in every continent uh, globally, but San Francisco is the, is the anchor action. So I know that folks might be uh, involved in activities in your own uh, cities and, and regions, but it'd be great if folks can uh, come up here on the 8th and participate as we march uh, uh, here in, the, in, in San Francisco. Obviously, we'll have the ability to really uh, uh, sh uh, raise our voice and see what, uh, what real climate leadership looks like because all eyes uh, are gonna be watching what's happening in the city given that the uh, summit itself is happening here in San Francisco. So the way that we're organizing this, we actually have a leadership team made up of organizations based here in San Francisco and the Bay and uh, uh, throughout the Bay region, in fact, and also uh, uh, nationally. Uh, we have a host committee of uh, groups that are helping us pull together. And we have, I mean, literally hundreds of groups and individuals that have been lending their time and energy, creativity to help us pull this off. Uh, as as uh, I should say that this, that this uh, March on the 8th is not formally part of the Global Climate Action Summit. That's something that the governor's office is doing. So around, uh, around this, this time, uh, uh, from the 8th onward, and even before then, actually, uh, we know that lots of partners are organizing different side events and different kinds of activities. But we're here together to organize for, for the, uh, the March on the 8th. We're very fortunate that the People's Climate Movement uh, ha that has had experience organizing these kinds of, of mobilizations in 2014 in New York City, 2017 in Washington, Washington D.C. They're supporting this mobilization, uh, but we have a distinct uh, a leadership, decision-making, and organizing structure. Uh, as folks might have heard also, uh, e even um, uh, post the 8th of September, the It Takes Roots Alliance, which is, is comprised of the global, uh, the uh, global Grassroots Justice, Climate Justice Alliance, it take um, the Indigenous Environmental Network and Right to the City, are, they're organizing a, a suite of activities right after the march on the 9th and, uh, leading up to the, uh, the summit itself. So, you know, and, and there's a lot of um, uh, cross-pollination here, a lot of synergy being built amongst the different groups because many of us sit in, in both spaces. So there's a lot to get involved in folks, uh, starting from the 8th and, uh, and moving beyond. So just finally, I guess I'll, I'll mention, you know, I think part of the importance of the, um, of, uh, of the summit and why we're mobilizing is that, uh, as we know, this is called by Governor Brown. You know, he's uh, termed out 
a couple of months after the summit is done. And I think he's very much concerned about his, his reputation. I mean, part of the reason he calls this is as a swan song to sort of help uh, continue his, uh, his, uh, um, his stance as being a global leader on climate. And so because of, uh, of that, I, we feel that he's uh, uh, definitely uh, prone to pressure, uh, prone to pressure that coming from communities across the state saying, that California needs to get off of fossil fuels. We need to protect communities that are being devastated by the fossil fuel industry. And that we need to embrace a just transition to a new energy model. So we wanna be forceful in saying that to Brown, but also I, I would wanna say, be forceful in creating that framework for the new governor coming in come November and, and him, I think we know who it's, who it's going to be, making sure that they, that they hear from our voices about what real climate leadership looks like. And then, you know, we continue working and making that happen for, for our communities, our families, and our, our movement. So I'll leave it at that for now. And uh, I'll let uh, Pete keep us going. Great. Thank you so much, Antonio. You know, Antonio has been a part of the environmental justice movement in California for uh, a long time and is one of the visionaries of uh, actually naming that uh, what the, the global climate movement needs is uh, to be responsive to and putting forth the real vision of climate leadership in San Francisco in September uh, in, in, as, the, as we found out the Global Climate Action Summit was coming. We need our voice in that conversation too and, and demanding that we're at a crossroads uh, we can choose to uh, do something new and build the economy and the, the, uh, the things that work for us all, or we can stay with the status quo, which isn't working for any of us. So thank you, Antonio, for your leadership. So uh, just noticing that we've got uh, folks from Riverside and San Diego, and, uh, uh, and so now we've got every part of California represented and up to 75 people uh, uh, with us today. So thank you all for uh, joining us. Um, I'm going to move on now to... Um, Karina Gould, who is uh, uh, one of the founders of Indian People Organizing for Change, one of the most powerful inspirational leaders in the uh, indigenous movement here in the Bay Area and uh, working on land rights and, uh, and environmental justice and, uh, and so many other things. So uh, Karina is going to walk us through what actually uh, September 8th is going to look like here in San Francisco. So Karina. Thanks so much, Pete. Can you hear me? So I just wanted to um, welcome everybody tonight. Thank you so much for calling in and um, being and paying attention to what's happening. And I think what we really want to do is to really want to uh, get uh, generate some energy about folks showing up to San Francisco, and why it's important for people to show up for, to San Francisco is because we need to show, um, like Antonio said, the governor coming in, but the governor leaving as well. That before they get to San Francisco for their climate, uh, their global climate um, action, climate. Um, that we as people of California and around the world are really uh, have something to say about this and why we're not for the cap and trade and why we want people to keep the um, uh, keep stuff in the ground. And so what we're going to do is we're actually as indigenous people going to start the day off in a very good way. We're going to start off with a water ceremony at the waters in San Francisco, um, praying for the waters. And this has done been done for the last two um, marches that have happened. Uh, the large march in New York, uh, folks came together and they brought water from their watershed and prayed over that water and started off the day in a good way. And we'll be doing that in San Francisco as well, uh, bringing indigenous leaders from around the world and for, throughout California and um, a part of the country to do that, to start us off in a good way. And um, after that, we're all gonna be meeting in Embarcadero and we're gonna walk um, to Civic Center together. And we really want people to encourage people to get contingents of folks together from your communities to San Francisco. I think it's important for us to show a force um, of people coming together, um, not just in your own communities, but to actually send a contingent to San Francisco so that we can have thousands of people in the streets with the same message. We want you to be able to um, be able to work with people in your community to actually get contingency together to bring big art out, to bring signs out, to bring really good energy out so that we can um, really send that message loud and clear. Um, that there will be also, um, when we get there to the Civic Center, we have some 
really great ideas um, about having people set up booths that have information about the work that you're doing in your own communities, having resources available for the community and the people that were not able to march, but they could actually go to Civic Center, pick up information about uh, how you can plug in in your own communities, how you can create change in your own communities, and how to bring those resources uh, forward. And so we're really um, lucky to have people that are doing this work all throughout the state of California and across the country that's going to be joining us. The state of California is huge and we want to make sure that everybody's voices and everybody is able to be there in the streets with us. And uh, San Francisco is a really great place for us to do that kind of work together to make those voices heard. Um, and so when we are finished doing that, we get people all gathered up at Civic Center. We have this great idea of creating some artwork that Antonio is going to, um, no, I'm sorry, Elena is going to be talking about. And uh, we're going to create some artwork that's going to include everybody. And I hope that Elena is able to jazz you up about creating this artwork because we're going to put messages on the streets. And I'm going to pass it on back on over to Pete and let Elena talk about that as well. Great. Thank you, Karina. Again, Karina's uh, leadership in the Bay Area around uh, indigenous rights and, and uh, the rights of nature has been so powerful and so, so, so thankful uh, for her leadership. Uh, and, and again, you can feel that uh, folks from around the Bay and around the California and around the globe are really putting a pin in how important this day is and how big and broad and uh, exciting our march is going to be on September 8th. And so, I um, uh, just want to mention to that end, we've had two mass meetings so far in the Bay, uh, one in Oakland and one in San Francisco. And uh, uh, the one in San Francisco was just two nights ago. We had about 300 people uh, in a church uh, digging into the work and, uh, and uh, hearing powerful stories about migration and powerful stories about, uh, you can see the images here from Oakland and San Francisco, powerful stories about the impacts of climate uh, and injustice and, uh, and racial injustice and economic injustice on people's lives and what we want to build together. And so you can see uh, um, the momentum is happening. Folks are, are coming out. We've broke into work groups, the uh, big organizations, bit small organizations, folks uh, who aren't affiliated with organizations yet just coming together and throwing in. And uh, it's a really exciting moment to, to get engaged. So we'll figure out, we'll talk to in a second about how to get plugged into those specifically. Um, but now I want to turn towards Elena uh, from Culture Strike. And folks probably have seen uh, uh, artwork from Culture Strike uh, uh, um, bridging the gap between art and activism and, and showing that they're actually uh, one and the same. And we can't uh, uh, win the future that we all deserve if we aren't able to uh, do it well with uh, the arts. So I want to pass it to Elena to talk about one of the most exciting pieces of our day on September 8th, the Mass Mural Project. Elena. Great, thank you, Matt. Um, let me know if you all can't hear me at any point. Um, so again, my name is Elena Aurora. I'm with Culture Strike. And um, I'm super excited about the Street Mural Project. I think that, you know, as Karina said, we're going to have um, the March end at Civic Center. And we're really aiming for sort of two goals. One, we really want to uh, break the the Guinness Book of World Records on the largest street meal. But two, we really want to touch, move, and inspire people around the type of artwork that they um, that they want to demonstrate in their community around some of the um, issues that they're facing, but also some of the forms of resiliency that they're facing in climate justice work. And so um, we're going to be working with 75 contingents to make 50 by 50, um, si 50, by 50 foot street murals um, and we'll be working with them over the course of time um, to support their supplies, their how-tos, what they want to, what message do they want to send out onto these streets, um, but then also how do we weave together all of the common themes that um, a lot of folks are facing. So again, um, we'll be working with 40, 75 people to make this thing happen. So it'll be sort of in, like on the block, around the block, the street mural will happen. Um, it'll be, I don't know more of SFA is, is um, they've done things like this before, but we want to amplify what they're, what they're doing. Um, and yeah, we're really excited about it. We have lots of different community members coming together to share their stories, um, to really leave something lasting on the streets. And we're going to be using non-toxic paints so uh, it's going to really show a message through and through, not just visually, but also with what we're using to um, 
to actually show this demonstration. So that's something that we've been working on in the Arts Committee, and we're super excited to get people engaged and on board. Um, and, you know, type any questions if you have any. Um, I see a couple. Volume, please. Can you all hear me now? Is this a little bit better? Okay. Um, so that's some of the, the street meal project that we're working on. The other piece is the art tour. And so if you all know the Peace Poets out of New York, um, they are a brilliant group of folks who are, uh, they, they do lots of songwriting and lots of poetry, and they do it for social movements. So what's really beautiful is that they're going to be touring in August, the last two weeks, um, and they're going to be here. So if you have any artists or any um, committees or groups of people that you want them to come, the Peace Poets will come to your um, community and support you with a workshop to make that happen. So let, I believe, David Solnit know if you are um, interested in that happening. Um, and yeah, and then I see a question, how many people should assemble for a street mural team? Um, that's a great question. I think that we, it, it's really based on each individual um, group. So I would say at least, I'm not sure, Pete, if you have a better gauge on that, but at least three to five. But again, it could be a whole community of folks and we are planning to have a lot of it sketched out before people actually arrive. So the march will happen and they'll end up at the Civic Center um, where, you know, a lot of the, 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 the beginning outlining work has already happened. So people will come from the march, be all jazzed up, and then go ahead and hit, literally hit the streets painting. Great. Thank you so much, Elena. So uh, excellent questions in the chat. And, and again, thanks to Elena and the amazing work that, uh, that they do. And she does a culture strike to, to really bring uh, movement momentum uh, and, and beauty and uh, articulating the world that we want through arts. Uh, we've all been to marches and protests about what we're against. And uh, culture strike does a beautiful job of articulating what we're for. And that's what, what a lot of the day is going to be. Um, so that the a couple of uh, see questions in the chat about the poet group is the uh, Peace Poets out of New York. And uh, um, they are a really powerful organization. Uh, and uh, we've already had really powerful singing at uh, each of our mass meetings. Um, and uh, in terms of the, we'll, we'll get to the structure and, and how to plug in about uh, how many people to organize for um, your mural team that we're, we're setting up to have 75 individual organizations. Imagine a group that comes from the Central Valley and, and they do a 50 by 50 foot mural about this is what it's like to be fracked in our neighborhood, poisoning the water of our children. Or a group comes from Santa Rosa and says, this is what it's like to have our houses burned down because drought and uh, climate change is affecting our daily lives. And knit those together, all together as one big giant mural, the largest mural of all time. So we'll work out the, um, uh, the teams of, of how many folks you need to require, uh, recruit to build that piece out. We've got an organizer working on that piece that we'll get to in a second. Um, but really thankful for the leadership of Culture Strike and Elena to to uh, bring that vision uh, together. So, so, um, so you've heard a bit of the why, you've heard a bit of the what, and you've heard a bit of the the um, uh, the prettiest part uh, of the what uh, of, of the mural piece. Um, so now I'd like to hand it over to Matt from 350.org who has been a longtime organizer in the Bay Area and worked on uh, each of the first two piece, uh, the People's Climate Marches um, uh, in DC and uh, New York. And he's gonna walk us through uh, some of the how, what, uh, where do we go from here? And then after that, we'll dive into your questions. So uh, have them teed up and, uh, and ready to go. So Matt. Great, thanks so much, Pete. And thanks everyone for joining. Um, yeah, as Pete mentioned, we are going to do some, like a proper Q&A after this. Um, so if you do have questions while I'm talking, feel free to type them into the chat for those of you that are on a computer or on uh, a platform where you can do that. We know some people are also on the phone. So when we get to that section, uh, we'll instruct you how to do questions via the phone too. So don't feel left out if you, if you don't have the chat in front of you. Um, so yeah, as Pete said, I'll go a little bit into some uh, kind of the more details of how groups can engage, particularly groups that are not based in the Bay Area, but that are around the entire state um, or the entire West Coast region. So we really do want this to be um, a, a mobilization that brings in all those different communities and voices. Um, so I'm going to run through a few of these things. Um, we are going to send out an email afterwards that'll actually have links and details to all these things. So don't feel like you need to get furious notes over everything that we're laying out there. We'll, we'll get those notes to you. Um, so some of the, the, the best ways you can start organizing, 
Um, start local organizing tables or local organizing committees. Um, this is one of the biggest successes of the People's Climate Movement in 2014 and 2017 was organizing, um, you know, having groups lead organizing tables in New Jersey and Connecticut and all over the East Coast region. We want to be able to emulate that uh, here in, in the West Coast as well. Um, that could be local volunteers, local organizations, probably relationships and networks that you already have from doing local campaigning or organizing, but building out sort of a local organizing committee towards September 8th will be huge. Um, we can help connect you with other partners in your region. Um, a lot of the national organizations who are part of this can help connect their local affiliate groups. Um, and even people who have, individuals who have RSVP'd um, already for, for September 8th, we can help connect them based on zip codes to the work that you're doing locally. Um, outreach, that's a huge one. We actually um, did a print run a while back of 50,000 uh, postcards and posters. And as of our mass meeting on Monday, we we're just about out of them, um, which is great. But most of that's been to people in the Bay Area. Um, we'd love to help get those postcards and posters out uh, across the state. Um, we can't do a full mail order operation, but if you're able to sort of be an anchor in your community and say we could send a box of postcards to Santa Barbara or to Bakersfield or to Humboldt, um, we'd ha be happy to make that happen um, and help you know, give you one more tool to help you outreach with. Uh, organizing buses. Um, we're sort of working on the structure for this, but the hope is to see charter buses from all over the state coming and joining us in San Francisco. Um, we are working on developing a toolkit for how you can be a bus captain and organize a bus. Um, we're working on fundraising to help groups uh, subsidize the cost of buses, make them more affordable and accessible from, from people across uh, various backgrounds and economic abilities. Um, as Elena and others mentioned earlier, organizing one of the arts contingent. Um, we are hoping to have 75 contingents that might have, you know, several hundred people in each. Um, so that's a great way to make sure that the issues that you work on in, in your community or your local campaigns, or your local voices aren't just heard, they're also seen. Um, digitally, if you work in digital spaces, either as an organization or maybe just an individual with social media like Facebook or Instagram, uh, we've got some great digital tools you can use. Um, we're going to share around the link and there's a, a screenshot up now, but uh, you can use your phone to text message this to the uh, text rise CA to 83224. Um, you can help share content on social media and Facebook. Um, if you're an organization that works in digital spaces, we've got a whole digital cool kit that can help you get content for your website, um, language to share email blasts to your network or your lists, um, a way that you can track RSVPs um, so that we can help really beyond the March and Center 8th really build your local power and your local capacity and your ongoing work. Um, we've got working groups um, coming out of the, the, the Bay Area mass meetings. There are at least a dozen, if not twice that uh, many working groups. Um, this is everything from logistics to communications to organizing in faith communities to labor organizing um, and songs and culture and art and so much more. Um, a lot of those work groups are happening locally, so they're a little more face-to-face, -face, but a lot of them could happen remotely, and we'd love to plug people in, particularly to outreach to some of those working groups. If you've got specific skills or specific networks, a lot of that work can, can really happen virtually, and we've got, most of those work groups have either uh, a listserv, like a Google group, um, and for those that use Slack, we've got Slack channels and a Slack team set up specific to Rise, and again, we'll share all those details with folks um, in an email after this call. Um, I want to give a big shout out to 350 Bay Area. Um, they've created a, a, a tool called the People's Calendar. It's at peoplesclimatecalendar.org. Um, and their hope is to be a place where all the different events related to the, to the summit in September can be showcased from official side events to protests and demonstrations. Um, the expectation is we'll probably see anywhere from 300 to 500 different events happening that week of all sizes and, and accessibility. And this will hopefully become the hub where people and the movement can really utilize that to, to promote their events, to share resources, to connect with each other, collaborate, et cetera. Um, we are working on a, sort of a virtual photo booth um, as a way that people can, can speak about what they're gonna rise for. Um, we'll, have, we'll have a link we'll share around for how to do this, but it's as simple as taking a photo or a selfie if you're of that thing. You can see some examples in the slide here. Um, what are the issues? What are the, the considerations that are motivating you to join Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice? Um, 
of course, sharing all these things on social media. We've got a couple of hashtags that, that we're trying to encourage groups to use to keep raising the visibility and profile of this. Um, and before we pivot into the q and I just want to say that you know, these are a lot of our ideas for the ways you can engage around the state, but we're making this road by walking it together. And we're really looking for your ideas of how you can be involved, what you could do in your community, how your campaigns, your issues, your communities can, can relate to this and, and really benefit from RISE. Um, so we're about to do a Q&A um, with Vanessa. Great. Thank you so much, Matt. You can hear all of the various ways that you can plug in and, uh, and you'll hear this again in a second, but uh, uh, you, know, you all are participants now and we're hoping that by the end of this call, you feel empowered to be an organizer, a part of the team. You know, uh, we can't get to the, to the scale that we need unless everybody uh, really brings in their networks, brings in their creativity, brings in their, their visions for what this day can look like together. So, so um, big thanks to Andrew. Antonio and Karina and Elena and Matt uh, for, for laying out uh, the what, uh, who, what, where, when, why. Um, and now we're gonna pass it over to Vanessa to field some of your questions. Hopefully we've inspired you a little bit uh, and, and I imagine you've got some thoughts and questions about where we go from here. So, Vanessa. Hi everyone, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Great. Sound great. Um, so I have the digital team here next to me busily scribbling down some of the questions. Um, a few that we've had so far, um, are there any plans to help those with disabilities and what are travel accommodations? Um, and actually, before I even dive into these questions, I want to preface all of this. As Matt said, we are uh, building the bridge as we cross it. <laughs> and a lot of your questions, if I don't have an answer for you tonight, and I may not, uh, rest assured that we are um, taking all of these questions in so that we will have answers. And the one place you can go for everything eventually will be that ca.riseforclimate.org website. Um, and we are continuing to populate that as we go. Um, so that being said, uh, we will have plans to help those with disabilities. We are working on plans now to include, for instance, uh, ASL interpretation at our next mass mobilization meeting. We um, are trying to make everything we do accessible and we would welcome suggestions for resources and tips on how to make everything more accessible. So uh, for sure, we want to include people with disabilities, absolutely. Um, travel accommodations, there is no official plan yet. Um, and a lot of that is going to be uh, ad hoc, but um, one possibility is we might have some sort of a board that we can, uh, in fact, I'm thinking maybe we should start a channel in our Slack team that's just about accommodations to try to hook people up with possible host, host families. Um, so we will address that in the coming weeks. Another question is, is there a Facebook event for the March? Uh, and I think the answer is not yet. There will be. But there will be this week. This week. So uh, all you Facebook fans, hang tight. Uh, we will have one and um, we will send out, um, there will be an email follow up to this call that will have both all of the slides that you've seen tonight. So if you didn't scribble down the URL, don't panic. We will have that out to you and we will include the Facebook link in that email. It may or may not be live yet, but that's where you will be able to find it on Facebook to start sharing. In the meantime, if you're on Facebook, please share just the ca.riseforclimate.org website. Um, will tables be set up at Civic Center or just in Barcadero? Um, Matt, correct me if I'm wrong on this, they will just be at the Civic Center, which is the destination. We actually uh, don't have confirmation yet from the city of San Francisco about our permits. So we don't even know yet if the route is coming south from the Embarcadero or north from the mission. And if it's going through the mission, we don't know yet which streets it will be on. So that permitting process is happening kind of as we speak. And we're hoping within the next week or two, we will be able to say with certainty what the city has permitted us to do. And then you will know what the route is and where things will be. But the end will definitely be at the Civic Center and that is where the mural will be and that is where the information tables and uh, resource fair will be. Okay, we got more questions. How do we contact various work groups? Um, the best place right now is on Slack. If you don't know Slack, you can contact me. 
Um, but what we are really encouraging people to do is to, if you are a part of an organization, whether it's a grassroots group or a, um, you know, whatever, a large organization, a small, small organization, a group of some sort, if you can, in your group, find someone who is like, you know, your techie person, we call that a digital deputy, and um, find someone who knows Slack and can then help everybody else get on it, that will be the best resource for you. But we have a Slack platform built out. We have channels built out. You can add more if you don't see the channels you want. We just ask that you keep the nomenclature consistent so people can find your channel. Um, well, if I can jump in, Vanessa, we'll, we'll also put into the, the follow-up emails that uh, some of the working groups that, that Michael from uh, Michael Eisinger just posted in the uh, chat here that uh, how to sign up for the labor working group. We'll put uh, the follow-up for uh, some of the working groups in there. And again, uh, there, there are more working groups that are, that are going to be built out uh, mostly on the outreach side. So, um, and then the website will eventually reflect if you want to show up to join the, the, the faith contingent, this is how you, you plug in in that way. To sh show up to join the youth contingent, this is how you plug in in that way. Um, go ahead, Vanessa. Okay, what time does the march start? We don't know yet. <laughs> we'll let you know when we get our permits. Where can we pick up postcards? Um, if you are in the Bay Area, you can pick them up, I guess, uh, Matt, do you want to, oh, actually, Antonio, do you have some there in your office? And we yes. have some in our office. Yes, we have uh, several boxes of them here at our office in the Mission District. And our address can go out, you know, with the uh, follow-up materials. But we're, yeah, Mission District right by the 16th and Mission Bart Stop. And similarly, we have a box here in our Oakland office, and we'll send that address out as well. Uh, we're right near the 12th Street uh, BART station in downtown Oakland. Um, we will also uh, be sending you out artwork so you can print your own. Um, and we will, if, if you need large quantities, um, we are considering putting together another large order because we've already gone through like 30 or 40,000 of the 50,000 we had printed. So we may put in another order. We also have posters um, and we are probably going to do another run of those as well. Um, so you can um, reach out to me if you need, if you actually, uh, if you can't get to Oakland or San Francisco and you want posters and postcards and you don't want to print your own because you want to do a whole bunch, please reach out to me and my email will be in the follow-up email to this uh, call. Next question, is there a requirement for organizations that sign on as a participating organization? Um, there is a form that you need to fill out. I believe if you fill that out, um, you, can, you can be a participating organization and that form is accessible at ca.riseforclimate.org. Uh, at the top, if you go to the partners tab, that'll take you to that form. Um, are there any more? Uh, oh, um, what is the calendar of events web address? That was uh, peoplesclimatecalendar.org. And are there plans to make RISE materials written in Spanish? Yes, there are. We're super excited. And um, some of them are done. Some of them are being translated as we speak. And uh, starting, I'm hoping next week, all of our mass emails that go out will go out in English and in Spanish. But we have an art toolkit that is uh, already being translated and the rest of our stuff is actively being translated uh, on an ongoing basis. So yes, and our meeting, our mass meeting on Monday night um, was almost completely translated and we had speakers who were speaking in Spanish and being translated back into English. Um, that is that, that's that, do you have any more? Okay, uh, will there be a families and children activities group? Uh, we hope so. We need a working group for families and children that hasn't been formed yet. So if uh, whoever asked that question um, would like to be the point person, we would love it. Um, uh, I know that there are several groups uh, like Moms Out Front and um, Moms Clean Air Force and uh, Climate Parents. And we would love it if you all would form a working group for families and children. We Right now we have a youth working group, but we don't yet have a families and children working group and we need one. 
Is there, next question, is there a specific policy platform that the coalition is delivering to leaders or is this more of a general mass action? Well, uh, yes. <laughs> the, the general, I will take a stab at this and then Pete, jump in and tell me if there's anything sure. I'm missing that's not nuanced. Basically, we want this to be a great big tent that has room for everybody and we want to be really clear that you can't be a true climate leader without addressing the supply side of the equation. So it's great to be promoting a reduction in demand for oil and fossil fuels, but we got to also cut it off at the source. So some people are less comfortable with that than others, but in the, and, and if you're not, you get to be in a contingent that just flies your own flag and we're gonna welcome you. The, the march as a whole is big enough to include everybody who is fighting for as fast, a, just a transition as we can have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just weigh, uh, weigh in on that for a second. So, uh, so uh, uh, yes, there is, a, uh, there is not a sign on to this bill to um, uh, uh, do, uh, uh, do this specific um, uh, ordinance in this city. Uh, what we're hoping and what we've built, we hope, is uh, a vision and a, a, a tent big enough that uh, folks like yourselves and folks like many other parts of the coalition can come in and, and bring their uh, bring their campaigns to this march and drive through it. You know what we've seen uh, in the People's Climate March in, in New York City in 2014. Uh, a big visionary um, uh, mission as, as we have and, and, and talking about how we need everyone to, to change everything. And folks saw that opportunity and stepped in and said, okay, we're gonna drive for um, uh, uh, accountability on fossil fuels and, and other things. And a lot of that has played out into years later campaigns winning at the city level in New York City. So we're hoping for the same level of uh, big tent mobilization and then folks uh, taking the tangible and bringing those campaigns inside our mobilization. To be clear about some of the things that we've uh, laid out, it is about um, centering racial and economic justice and the, and the uh, communities that are most impacted, lifting those voices, uh, challenging the fossil fuel industry and fossil fuel industry production, in, uh, both in California and across the country and across the world, um, uh, 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 moving towards the real solutions and community-centered solutions that are uh, usually in the communities that are most harmed by uh, uh, climate change and uh, moving away from the commodification of nature and, and moving towards a system that works for gen genuinely for everybody, a just transition for workers and for uh, communities and uh, so that we can build the economy and the state and the nation and the world that we all deserve. Thanks, Pete. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, we have a couple more questions. I want to get through these. Um, um, on the day of, will logistical updates be sent out via text message? Yes. Remember that big s slide that said text rise CA 283224? Get out your cell phone right now and do that, and then you will be on the text list to be getting those day of messages. That is exactly the kind of thing it's for. Uh, rise, rise, C A, no space, just R I S E C A, all one word. Um, also, there was a question about getting postcards closer to San Jose. Um, if anyone, Linda, or anyone else who's down there, uh, or even in Palo Alto, is going to be up either in San Francisco or in uh, Oakland and wants to grab a bunch and be a point person, we would be delighted. Um, so again, contact me if you wanna do that and I will um, help coordinate. And um, will we be adding the time uh, information and the location information to posters? Yes, uh, and thank you for reminding us of that. Um, we will hopefully have that information before the next round of posters and postcards goes out and we will update those with the information that we have when we get it. And I think, um, are there any more? We still have a little bit of time, but I think, um, are there any this, more questions? We this last question. um, do we have access to material that might have been used for outreach to particular groups for previous climate marches, for example, materials directed at youth, faith groups, et cetera? Um, yes. Um, 
I think I need more context. Could the person who wrote that question maybe text, text in a little more context for that question? Um, okay, while I'm waiting for that, we have another question. The idea of a die-in for five minutes is very powerful. Are we considering that on Market Street as part of the march? Um, to date, we hadn't been, but I personally think that could be very powerful and we will absolutely put it into the mix for sure. Um, we will have to consider about how logistically, how we would make that happen. But if we decide to do something like that, we will definitely message everybody in advance so that everyone is prepared to die at the same time. <laughs> so it's clear what we're doing. <laughs> um, so, and then there's a question about um, tabling and I'm assuming that the question is about, um, the resource fair. The resource fair. That's what we're calling the resource fair, which will be at the Civic Center. I don't actually know the answer to that question. Or Matt, yeah. So, so we will absolutely. Then we're setting up a system now, like the, like the mural, where organizations will uh, uh, have a, a system where they can apply. Like, what we will be a, a team that's going to take a chunk of the mural, and and we'll uh, have the arts organizers come around and, and help train folks and plug them in. Likewise with the teams who are building out the resource fair. So uh, we'll provide tables and, and, and uh, definitely don't have to lug your own table through a mile and a half march of uh, thousands of people in San Francisco. Um, uh, but there will be a space for folks to, to bring their uh, literature, et cetera. And we'll have uh, an application process for who's gonna end up uh, with those uh, spots. Um. All right, I had a question about um, faith, a specific group, a question about faith messaging. We have a very active uh, faith working group. So we will connect you in with them. We'll provide a link to there. They actually have a Google group set up already um, as well as the Slack channel. So we will connect you with them for those sorts of specific uh, subgroup questions. Um, and um, Great. Okay, we had a question about music and selecting uh, speakers and musicians. Matt, do you want to field that question about how those selections are happening? Sure. So we're still figuring out a lot of these details, um, but the at this point, you know, the primary activity once we get to Civic Center, we're thinking would be the murals, which we're hoping to have thousands and thousands of people join in. Uh, and the resource fair, obviously a way to get people plugged into ongoing campaigns and existing organizations to keep that energy and momentum and, and capacity going. Um, so we're not, we're not sure, we're, we're definitely not looking to make it to become a concert. I think if we're going to do music, um, it's really more providing some energy and some background music and such um, for those other activities. Um, but as we start to figure out the permits and lock that down and figuring out staging and sound and all that and lock that down, um, I think we'll start thinking a little more uh, seriously about sort of the program and what that looks like. Um, but again, the hope is to, to really focus on the other activities happening at Civic Center um, and not just have it all be centered on on the stage. And this is this is Elena speaking, if I could chime in as well. Um, the, the artist committee, we've been speaking a lot about um, a group of folks who are songwriters. Um, so during the march, they'll be um, there'll be different songs and different things happening to activate people and to get people excited. Um, but it would be separate from like at the stage when things are happening. So there are conversations about that as well. Great. Thank you, Elena. Mm -hmm. We had one other question about, will there be a uh, sign or poster making space like May Day in Brooklyn for the People's Climate March in New York City? where groups or artists could make signs and that there was an art space for, uh, for the DC March as well. Um, I know, so my understanding is that we don't have an art space but that NCM does. So we're, so we're a couple of answers to that question. One, we're, uh, we're working on securing a space that, uh, where we're going to house all of the big, beautiful art that you all are going to create, puppets, posters, et cetera. And, and uh, a lot of energy uh, is going to go into uh, um, art creation in the days leading up to. 
Um, one thing with, uh, in addition to that, that, that we're, we're not sure it's going to be as extensive as the art space that uh, we've had in New York City, and, um, uh, but, uh, but there will be space and, and we've got a warehouse in, in West Oakland that is available to us to help build some of that out and, and we're uh, definitely going to be uh, putting a high emphasis on the art that we all create together. One, uh, one addition to that is this arts tour that Elena mentioned before. Uh, with the intention of going around to the, the folks who are within a day's drive of, uh, like many of you, uh, within uh, reach of San Francisco, um, and doing a training about here's the songs that we're going to sing, here's the mural that you all are going to produce, and let's do some screen uh, printing and let's do some banner making together uh, in the late days of August. Uh, we're going to set those up in spaces around uh, California. To, to uh, So this will be one way that folks will be producing materials that are not just here in the Bay, we'll be doing that too, but um, one way to extend who's, who's creating art and making a unified visual message that we can bring together. And I just put a note in the chat, you can contact me and I put my email there. Um, if you're interested in hosting a stop on that arts tour, please let me know, because I'm working with David Solnit to figure out the, the where, where all they are gonna be able to go. And what we're hoping is, Sorry, that that'll be a, um, uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of demand. So, and we want the um, stops on the tour to be opportunities, not only for making art and getting skills in making art for protests, but also um, opportunities for groups that are in the same similar regions to get together. So for instance, the folks in Ventura, in, Santa Barbara were recommending that Ventura would actually be a good host location because there are four different 350 groups all within that group. And then of course there's a whole bunch of other groups as well that are affiliated in that area. So the idea is that with one, in one group area, a bunch of different um, groups would be able to come together for a stop on the arts tour. So if you're interested in, in uh, either being a host site or uh, bringing your group to a neighboring city as a as a participant, contact me and I will coordinate with David. Um, we might are we at time? I think we're we're pretty on. close. So uh, I see one more question that I'll just speak to quickly and then and then move us towards the next steps if that feels uh, good, Vanessa. Cool. Thanks. Uh, huge thanks to Vanessa for fielding a lot of those questions and the the. Um, uh, the, the, the team, Christy and Emily, they're furiously writing down all, all of your thoughtful questions. So two quick answers, and then I'll move us to next steps. One is about other marches. That, uh, um, this is part, as Antonio and Karina mentioned, this is part of a global and national day of action. So there are other marches in other places across, all across the country and across the world. This is the anchor march. That uh, this is the you know the, the the reason September 8th was chosen is because it's in the at the doorstep of uh, the Global Climate Action Summit and setting the frame that any leader who comes to San Francisco has to step through in order to uh, be acknowledged as a real climate leader. So yeah, there are other marches, other places around the country and the world, but uh, San Francisco is the anchor march that is going to be sort of the centerpiece in the media in the movement landscape. This is uh, this is the centerpiece of what we're doing, um, and then. The, um, uh, briefly on the, the uh, September 11th plans for a summit, I'm guessing that's the, the uh, solutions to uh, the, the um, uh, Solidarity to Solutions Summit of the It Takes Roots Network. Uh, they are doing an incredible solution summit on September 11th, again, in front of the, um, the Global Climate Action Summit itself. A lot of organizations are working in both places to make sure that folks inside hear the messages of uh, people from across the world who are calling for real climate leadership. And uh, uh, this march is really intended to sort of, as I said, set the frame, but uh, let, let's, let's make a big enough noise so that anybody who comes to San Francisco from around the world has to acknowledge that when they get up on stage, they have to acknowledge the, the powerful vision that we've set forward for what our communities need to look like uh, on September 8th. So uh, the recording is going to be made available and we'll send that around in the follow-up email. And now I'll just walk us through some next steps. Um, so the, uh, you've heard a lot of things. You've heard a powerful vision from Antonio and Karina about uh, what the world looks like, uh, what, why today, why this day in September 8th and, and where we're going to move towards um, and uh, what the vision of the world that we need looks like. 
um, and we've heard from Elena and uh, Matt the sort of how we're going to make it uh, uh, paint on the streets. We're going to put forward our vision of what it's going to look like. We're going to uh, supply buses. We're going to have a march that uh, goes through the streets of San Francisco. Um, so what to do now? Well, uh, we're not going to get to the scale that we need or any of the elected leaders who are coming to that summit are really going to hear unless we move from being participants to being organizers. So I encourage you all in the next couple of minutes before we close, throw up in the chat who you're going to reach out to. Is it your church? Is it your um, community organization? Is it your uh, school association? Uh, uh, who are you going to reach out to and how many folks do you think you can organize to bring with us on September 8th to San Francisco? So now throw those questions up and throw those answers up in the chat as we uh, run through the last pieces of, uh, before we sign off. The other next steps um, are uh, something you can do right now. Text rise CA all one word, 83224. So that's rise CA to 83224. You can see it on your screen now. Uh, if your organization wants to endorse the march, um, excuse me, uh, go to the website, that's ca.riseforclimate.org, and you can see in partnerships on that uh, website how to endorse, and uh, we'll loop you in to all the organizing through various organizations that we're doing. Uh, if you uh, want to, uh, we want everybody to, somebody mentioned a Facebook event, we want folks to sure show up on Facebook, but we first want folks to sign up to RSVP so that we can, can start the real head count of how we're going to get to the thousands that we need. So go ahead and RSVP at that ca.riseforclimate.org. Um, uh, we are going to reshare this recording, so please pass that along to your organizations. A lot of questions got answered, a lot of visionary things said about what's needed and, and where we're headed. So uh, pass that on, and uh, everybody who RSVP to this call will get that recording. Uh, we're going to host another one of these calls in a few weeks. So if, uh, as those folks that you're listing out who you're going to reach out to, including uh, I'm seeing neighbors via next door and a senior community and uh, the individual group that folks are a part of or the label union that folks are a part of. Um, uh, we hope that they join us and get on this next call and uh, figure out how to plug into buses and figure out how to plug into the contingent they're gonna be a part of. So we'll have another one of these calls and if you're uh, RSVP, you're already signed up to get a notice about that. And we'll send a link along with all the things that we discussed. So, um, I just want to thank all of you for taking an hour on a, a, a busy evening and, and in the midst of a lot of things happening in, in our country and the world that need attention and, uh, and seeing this as a venue to where we can really build what we need and uh, move away from the things that are killing us and move away from the things that uh, will build the community and the, the state and the country that we deserve. So uh, we'll wrap it up there. Um, thank you all for your time. Uh, and uh, I look for that email with all of the follow-up emails. I want to give a giant uh, appreciation to uh, Karina Gould uh, from Indian People Organizing for Change, from Antonio Diaz from uh, Poder, from Elena uh, uh, Aurora from Culture Strike, Matt Leonard and Vanessa Warheit and Christy Drutman and Emily Gervais uh, from 350.org, and all of you for joining us and, and, and really digging in. You know, we're looking forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks for the next call and in September uh, when we all get together on September 8th. So thanks all. Take care.